What up y'all, Esoteric Rider here. So behind me, I've got the Shadow 750. And if you haven't watched the video about the return of the 750 and why this video is even being made, I recommend going to watch that. So first things first, what I have done to this bike is that I have taken out the old battery, which is back there. And I put in the actual stock battery that I got for the Honda Fury in which I replaced with the anti-gravity battery. And I have that inside of here because that battery keeps going dead. I was gonna make a video on it, but it's kind of be like, I don't know, kind of a waste of time. Nobody really wants to watch me just take out a battery unplug it plug it back in bam there's a video and that's kind of cheap to me but what we are going to be doing in this video is working on the throttle grip and cable so what the problem is is that even though it snaps back into place just fine it's still really really sticky like it gets stuck it should be able to just free form so it's like if i keep a constant pressure on it like pulling down it sticks so it's like it's stuck there stuck there stuck there stuck there stuck there i know you can't really tell in the video but like i'm trying to apply constant pressure but it, it just kind of sticks and so what we're going to do is we're going to remove this and actually lubricate these cables and after that we need to come over to the clutch cable and do the same thing because this clutch cable is just oh gosh it is a nightmare this thing practically has no first gear unless you like dump the clutch and then everything else is is fine i guess i guess we'll see so let's uh quit the talking and let's start dismantling all right so first things first what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually undo the throttle push and pull cable and then i will unscrew the housing to the switches and then that should be able to at least free up the cables inside so i can take off the grip so let's go ahead and do that at a bit of an awkward position here i mean it didn't take much to bust that nut <laughs> i'm so funny and i totally didn't grab the right size wrench for that if at first you don't succeed try five eighths that works so it shouldn't take much to bust these loose So now those are completely loose. Great. So now what I gotta do is go underneath here. Which I don't know if you can see it on camera. Yes, I can. Take out these Phillips screws. One and two. All right, as normal, take note of two different size screws. You got the longer one is the back one and the front one is the shorter one. So now this is completely loose. I can go into here, let me swap the camera angle. So now if I kind of turn this upwards, I should be able to actually lift up on these and then slide it completely out. All right, so just like that. Ain't gotta worry about the brake because we're not working on the brake. So now these will be able to pop off and I can lubricate these. All right, now that I got these removed from the housing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the choke side of the bike and I'm gonna remove this plate that covers up where the throttle push and pull cables go into the carburetor and I'm gonna take them out from those so I can completely free the cables. Before anybody asks, I have no idea where that came from, who sells it. If I'm correct, the guy who had the bike before me, he was a he was a machinist, he like ran CNC things, and I'm pretty sure this is custom made. So yeah, if I had any more information, I'd give it to you. If not, if you happen to find it and I'm completely wrong, by all means, tell me in the comments. So now we gotta actually remove these from the little housings that they're in, and they're held in by these nuts right here. One cable down. All right, that's one and that's two. All right, so here I have one of the throttle cables and when it comes to actually lubing the cable, I use the Motion Pro Cable Luber version three. Um, it comes in multiple pieces. 
So what you'll do is you'll see that it comes with this rubber piece here. What you will do is you'll kind of put it in the shape of a, of a triangle with the pointy end pointing up and at the end of the cable. So now that I actually can move this. So it's already cut to where you can, I don't know if you can see it with my, my gloves, but you'll be able to actually just thread it on almost and just like a clamp thread, however you want to call it. And that smaller end will let, is if you actually set it the right way. All right, after an hour of having this slip out of my hands because it's already lubricated, yeah, that's how that's supposed to go on. Like this more narrow end points toward the top, but then you realize that this has to go on first, so now I gotta completely redo this. All right, so plain and simple, this just goes over top first and then the rubber piece. So now what you'll do is you will just kinda insert this end like so, and then this will go on like so, and then you screw it together. Make sure this is airtight. Actually, might get a wrench actually. And then do it. Because if not, it will just completely not go in the cable and it will just seep out the other end. All right, that's pretty damn tight. All right, yeah, that's, that's tight. So now. Simply all you gotta do is just kind of hang the other end of your throttle cable like kind of off a bit so where it can, like gravity can do its thing and have it drain down. So now what you'll do is you will take the red end of the straw, the red end, you know what I mean. You take the end of the straw and then shove it into the little black rubber piece on the end of the tool and then simply be ready for a mess. All right. So now when you're done lubing it, um, I let it sit for a second because the aerosol build up. If you pull this out immediately after, it'll shoot everywhere. Yeah, kind of, kind of weird, but hey, all guys at our age, we have that happen sometimes. So now this cable is lubricated. That makes both, so let's reassemble. And as normal, if you have excess like cable that didn't get hit with lubricant, I mean, you could always just spray some on there, rub some on there, you know. So that's actually what I think I'm gonna do. All right, let's go get this put back on the bike. All right, so this top one is for the this one right here which I kind of got to go on a bit of an angle just slide it up underneath yes in theory this would be a lot easier to remove the tank so you ain't gotta you know fight with it a lot but I know when I actually did the handlebars the full setup for the ape hangers I didn't have to so case in point just like right now I didn't have to there we go, all right. So now I'm gonna actually thread that on so it stays in place. I'm not gonna tighten it down just yet because it'll make it easier if I just do the cable like actually into the carburetor first. So I'm just gonna snug it up just a bit. And then what I'll do is I will pull this through and then just bend it and push actual housing through all right so one cable done all right great let's feed the other one through snug it up because this one we actually do have to adjust so this will do exactly like it did on the other one and there we go so I'm actually gonna pull that through a bit so okay now we go back into the handlebar housing okay so first we gotta actually put it into the housing before we put it onto the handlebar grip so this is the, oh God, I don't even remember which one's which. 
Yeah, I just probably took a note of that, right? Okay, if ever you're confused about which one's which, just go over to the carburetor and twist where we put the wires in and see which one moves, because that way you'll be able to tell which one is the push and which one's the pull. So, this one is the, not that one, but the pull. So that's gonna go in the very top one. And then get threaded in. I'll laugh, we lose power. Got a big storm that's literally about to happen during the filming of this. So we thread that in as much as we can. So we're gonna go all the way in and then we'll make the adjustment afterwards. And there is a storm a brewing. All right, so that is the first one. And we actually should be able to at least get in there with tweezers and then be able to pull that to the... Uh... All right, so the batteries on the GoPro died. So while that was charging, I actually just reassembled this. It was really self-explanatory. There's really no point in making a big, long, drawn out video about how to reinstall it. Like I said, super self-explanatory. This just gets threaded in, so does this. And then you just hook the wires through. You, you put the two holes that are like facing out towards the end of the bike, and then you just feed that through. Top cable goes to the top hole, bottom one, so it's the push-pull. But this throttle is smooth as butter now. It doesn't skip, it doesn't jump, it has a constant flow. So that's that's how it should feel. Like last time it was like that, 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 that. But now if I continuously put the same amount of pressure, it doesn't do that. It is just perfect. Perfect now. So. All I gotta do now is come down here, which I, I personally don't think I have to make any adjustments right now. I'll see when I actually fire the bike up, but I do have to uh, tighten these nuts up to make sure that the cables stay in place because there's not a lot of play. There should be just a little bit of play because just like the video I made on the Fury, there should be just a little bit of free play within the throttle, but that's like literally almost dead on. So I think I got lucky with that one. So I'm gonna tighten these three down and then put the plate back on and then, um, I don't know if I'm gonna make another video for the clutch cable, but it's literally the same process. So um, I don't know, I, I guess you'll see in the playlist, so.